In this video we're going to explain how to translate a for statement to ABR assembly code. So the first thing we need to know is the syntax and the semantics of the statement. The syntax is the following. We use the keyword for and then in parentheses we write three blocks which we're going to call init which will contain certain instructions separated by semicolons. The following one we're going to call it boolean expression and the third one we're going to call it final. Now the interesting property is that the boolean expression can only return two possible values either true or false and for this example we're going to assume that false is going to be encoded as zero and true is going to be encoded as different from zero. Now the for statement allows us to write arbitrary code in between curly braces and typically this code is referred as the body of the loop and then we close the curly braces. Now the meaning of this statement is the following. The, the code included as part of the init block is executed only once before the rest of the statement and then the statement is repeated evaluating the boolean expression. If the boolean expression is true the body is evaluated and at the end of the evaluation of the body the final block is then evaluated. So we have to be careful because despite the fact that the final block is here in this corner of this parenthesis, in fact it is as if it were placed in this final position right after the body. Now the assembly instructions that we're going to use to implement this structure here will start obviously by a collection of instructions as complex as needed to evaluate the init block. So this block over here will require a certain number of instructions depending on its complexity. Then the next block is going to start with the label eval and we are going to include here the instructions required to evaluate the boolean expression. Remember that we can only get two possible results, true or false. We're going to assume in this example that the result is stored in R18. So after evaluating this boolean expression we compare CPI the value of register 18 with 0. If these two values are identical, it means this condition is false. If it is false, then we can put a conditional branch BREQ to an, a label that we're going to call done, which will be placed at the end of the whole structure. Otherwise, if this comparison is not zero, it means that this expression is true. It needs to be followed then by all the instructions required to implement the body of the loop, whatever it takes. And the two final things that we need are the following. After evaluating the body what we said is that this final statement needs to be evaluated so we're going to put another block of code here as many instructions as needed to execute the final block and finally after we're done evaluating this final block at the end of the body we need to go back and evaluate the boolean expression again so we're going to put an unconditional branch jump to the label eval. And the label done, which is the destination of this branch, will be at the end of the overall structure. Let's illustrate this structure with an example. Let's suppose we have this fairly common construction in a programming language from i equals 0, let's say i less than 15, i++. Plus plus. And let's assume that i is an 8-bit integer which is a store in memory in allocation with the name i. Let's suppose we have an arbitrarily complex body here which we don't care about, we only care about the surrounding code and let's see how do we translate this to assembly code. So the first statement we need to execute is this one in which we set the variable i which is in memory to the value 0. So this could be implemented, one possibility is to first clear some specific register, let's say R18, and then store that value in the location of variable i. So these two instructions would be the equivalent of i equals 0. Afterwards we said 
that we put the label eval and then the code to implement the evaluation of this expression. In this case we can proceed to bring again i from memory and store it in R18 and then compare that register 18 with the value 15. Now if this condition is false we know we have to skip the body and terminate and this is the same as choosing a conditional branch this condition being false means that i is greater or equal than 15 therefore we can choose the conditional branch brge and jump to the label done immediately afterwards we place the instructions that would be executed if this condition is true if this condition is true this branch is not taken we end up executing here all the instructions required to implement the body of the loop and finally we need to translate the statement that is part of the final block in this case would be bringing again the value from memory we load R18 with I we increase in one unit R18 and then we store it back in memory and this would be the instructions required to implement this final block and as we said here now we just insert an unconditional jump to the label eval which is here followed by the label done which will be the destination of this branch now when we look at these instructions we can think immediately of a few optimizations like for example we are bringing R18 to memory to be stored in I and then we load it back again there could be a little bit of an optimization we can do here but we have to be careful because this instruction not only is executed after this one but it's also the destination of this jump so we don't necessarily need to have I stored in R18 although if we go back we see that this instruction here which is the same as this one is guaranteeing us that we are bringing the value of I into R18 therefore it could be an optimization to remove this instruction and leave it as using R18 because if we come from this place it is already loaded and if we come from this jump it is also loaded by this instruction over here these are the type of the optimizations that are done by compilers